what they found was people living within a mile of the cell tower had high, extremely high increased rates of cancer. And it was a direct correlation between the distance they were from the transmitter to the correlation of, of cancer incidence. So the, the question begs, you know, when people realize that the, the radiation coming out of their, their kid's iPad, out of these routers, is the same type of radiation, and quite frankly, higher in, in, in power uh, density because of the distance that you are to the device. An iPad, the children are literally uh, grounding themselves. And, and holding it on, on their body. Uh, so they're getting extremely high amounts of radiation. Uh, for example, we, we measured an iPad. Uh, and the iPad was anywhere between, um, it, it, was, it was between 30, it was over 30 uh, microwatts per centimeter squared, which is the, how, how much they measure uh, this kind of radiation. In. And we, we found that cell towers, standing next to a cell tower, can, can be anywhere on, on the magnitude of 5 to 10 uh, micro, microwatts per centimeter squared. So the, the, the distance is really important, but it, it's, it's also really important when, when realizing that the child is going to be using these iPads. And uh, it, it, even if you were to turn off the Wi-Fi, which is extremely high frequency. We also measured for extremely low frequencies, or what, what everyone knows as dirty electricity. And we found that off an iPad or even a smartphone, the, the dirty electricity can be as uh, it measures anywhere from 50 to 100 milligauss. That's a different measurement. Studies have shown that over two to three milligauss will cause cancer. Recently, a school uh, on the East Coast, I believe, uh, I think it was in Vermont, shut down a school because of the power line was outside the school. And that power line, uh, so they took measurements inside uh, for this extremely low frequency uh, power, this dirty electricity, and the measurements came out, I believe it was between five and seven. Five and seven. And that caused the uh, school board to close down the school indefinitely until the power lines could be moved. Now, if, if these iPads are emitting in user distance over 50 milligauss of dirty electricity, even with the Wi-Fi turned off, we're looking at a disaster here. And my point is, is that if, if these things were buildings, they would be condemned. And, and it wasn't you. Anyway, were you Wally's hearing aids doing it? You made Wally run off the set, so good. Right. I'm going to take Wally. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I don't know. You heard the feedback, I suppose. So, anyway, that, that was my point is that uh, these devices are extremely dangerous, and especially the iPad. Even if you turn them off, they're dangerous. Uh, the touchpad screen itself is, is interacting with your electrical. Uh, the way it works is it interacts with your electricity, and it, it interacts with your electrical field. That's how it works. And if you measure the milligauss coming off of these, or over 50 milligauss, two milligauss in studies have been proven to give you cancer. So, you know, that's been a given since the 60s. They close schools down when they get above five and seven milligauss, right? So I just asked, you know, Microsoft uh, or uh, Apple, you know, what, what are they thinking? Uh, and, and in the schools, you know, how can they not, not compare the, these, the, the one thing to the other? And, and it's just because they don't understand it is why. Now, uh, uh, Sean, 
I'm sure there's a lot of viewers watching and they're probably thinking, what can they do or how can they make their house safe or, you know, how can they protect their kids? What, what advice would you have for them? Well, number one, no child, uh, and, and, and this was uh, the, 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 um, what the advice of a former microwave British uh, secret agent trained in microwave warfare Barry Trower, who you've had on the show, uh, he was one of the first persons that got me involved with this, or one of the first persons who I saw explained, and I've had the opportunity to work a lot with him. And uh, I agree with him. He's of the opinion that, that there is no safe level of, of radiation. And what that means is, is you know, and his, his advice is that a child, a child should never use a cell phone unless it's a for an emergency reason, and that's literally a life or death reason. And uh, one of the problems becomes, uh, uh, or going back to the advice uh, to get rid of it, number one, anything that's wireless, you've you, you got to replace it with something that's wired. For example, uh, I've seen a new, new device out this, this last few months, and people like to have their... Uh, iPad to be able to control a TV or whatnot, but they've got new infrared remote controls and keyboards for your computers that do not emit this type of radiation, but use infrared, which, which is safe. And so there are alternatives, even if you're uh, a cordless, uh, if you demand a cordless environment. And, uh, but, but essentially, anything that's Wi-Fi, uh, the number one worst thing in your house, though, is your home cordless phone, uh, a.k.a. a DEC phone, or a digitally encoded cordless transmission device. You mean and those are probably, maybe next to baby monitors, the, the most deadly devices being made, made in the electrical market. Uh, so um, the, the reason the cell phones are so bad is because, or I'm sorry, the DEC phones are so bad, the cordless phone, your home cordless phone, is because they remain on all the time, and they're extremely powerful. They are more. They are, they will measure more powerful than a cell tower. Than if you're standing across the cell tower, if you have one in your house, and unfortunately, a lot of people have one maybe in their kitchen, and then again, one beside their bed. Yeah. Now that brings me to the next thing I would I would recommend: never ever. Use your alarm clock, uh, your cell phone, your smartphone as an alarm clock, and don't sleep with it next to your bed if, if you have to have it on. But uh, the reason it's so, and, and also your home cordless device also often sits by your bed. Number one, don't have have it. Uh, get a corded phone. No. And it, number two, if you're going to have it, have it in a far off place in your house because they never shut off. They never stop radiating. No, so, no. again, turn off your phone at night, turn off all cordless devices at night. If, you, if you're, you're steadfast on having a, a Wi-Fi router, just turn it off at night. Uh, unfortunately, for people living in apartments and condos, they're often surrounded by 40, you know, up to 40, 80 of these devices. And um, the only thing they can really do is to buy, um, there's a, a protective paint, but it's quite expensive, and they would have to coat their, the, the entire walls of their apartment uh, to get away from this, and it's almost impractical now, uh, to get away from it if you're in an apartment building. Now, Sean, uh, I kind of chuckled when you said about the house phone, the cordless house phones. Yep. I, I go through the hassle of turning off the uh, modem, the wireless, I don't like it, and, and, and in the back of my mind, I, I'm always thinking about the house phone, but, but I, I leave it on, and that was the phone that I was using talking to you guys this weekend for several hours, and yep. uh, so I think I'm going to have to find a new approach with a different uh, uh, hardwired phone at the house. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know... Um I personally don't have a cell phone, and 
you know, it, it, it is possible to get through life without a cell phone. And I think, I think a lot of people would actually find out, out that not having a cell phone is quite liberating and uh, gives them the time to do the things they, they need to do. And uh, um, it doesn't make you a, a, a robot, so to speak. So, um, you know, we, we can, we, we lived in a wireless world, a wired world before. And uh, in fact, most of the schools uh, that were, were wanting to get this radiation turned off in, Almost every one of them is already hardwired, and they continue to maintain the wired system. So they have a dual system, uh, and oftentimes the wireless is not even being used. Uh, even if they have the equipment, most of the most of the most classes don't use, use it, and so the children are being bathed in this radiation, uh, and and for no no purpose whatsoever. And for example, at Portland Public Schools, uh, we tested a a router that was made by Cisco, and it's a dual what's called a dual band router, meaning it comes in at both 2.4 gigahertz, which is the cellular frequencies and Wi-Fi, uh, and it also comes in at 5.0 gigahertz. So no one is using the 5.0 channel, but yet they're double microwaving these kids. Absolutely no reason, and uh, it's, it's it's a senseless technolo technology technology uh, that shouldn't even be used. But the way it's being used is 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 uh, truly 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 awful, uh, to, you know, and deadly. So uh, now, now, so on. We're uh, we got believe it or not less than ten minutes uh, left here already. Yeah. Uh, I know that you guys are involved in a case in in Rhode Island. Yeah, well, we have Joe's case. Uh, we, we're we're we, we're about to, to file two new cases, and, and one is on behalf of Joe, uh, Mr. Ambiano here, and he is in the Fullerton School District uh, mm -hmm. down in the uh, LA area, and we're going to be filing that uh, complaint to remove Wi-Fi. Uh, it will be an injunctive type relief, and it will be based on the violation of fundamental rights, and that's the right of a parent to choose whether or not their child is, should be exposed to a known uh, toxic agent or not when a less burdensome means exists to carry out the, the school's goal of educating via the Internet by way of wireless. And uh, all they have to do is choose wired, and no one's no one no one will be hurt, and they can still continue educating. Um, but essentially, our case is is, is a um, is a civil rights case, and it's it's uh, based on uh, the the protection of the of fundamental right of privacy, uh, the pri uh, the right of a parent to choose whether or not a, a child is exposed to a toxicant when when they don't have to be. And also the right of a, a child not to be exposed to the toxic, uh, uh, you know, the right to a uh, fundamental right of, of not to be a, a protection from bodily harm. Um, and those two cases will, are going to be filed very soon in federal court, uh, one in, in California and one in uh, Rhode Island. Now, uh, when you say... Uh Lawsuits uh, are they class action lawsuits or are they independent lawsuits for no, individuals? These are independent lawsuits, um, but they will have the effect of of they should have the effect of essentially setting precedent. Um, and you know, it, it's essentially uh, you, you know. A, a Roe v. Wade type of case that's going to set a precedent with with only one or one one plaintiff. And and I want to remind the viewers watching that uh, we're going to do another show with Attorney Abril uh, in regards to what I've been going through with the microwave shocks to my body and all that. And uh, Sean, you do have a class action lawsuit you're working on with that, correct? Yes, 